Excuse me. Where to deliver that lumber into the studio? Oh. We're building the set. Well, where's your pass? Where's that pass? We passed it. What do you mean, we passed it? Well, I left it at your house, and we passed it. My partner tells me that we left our pass at my house, and we passed it. Oh, a smart guy, huh? No, I'm not a smart guy. You bet he isn't. Molly, wait here. I think I've got an idea. Now listen. It's very important that we get that lumber into that studio. Now, if we don't, we could lose our job. Well, read my lips. No pass, no studio. But you don't understand. If we don't get paid, then we won't be able to pay our lease on our house. We could lose everything. Ollie, Wait. Over here. Excuse me. under one of those, it's bad luck. You Who's them? No idea. Well, let's do something about it. set built. Hmm. Well, they've got us up. Jim, uh, would you take the places, please, and let's stand by on the set. Will someone get those carpenters off the set? What they call us? Carpenters, indeed. Come on. We know where we're not wanted. She went a swell theater. Do you have the tickets? I don't think we need tickets. It's our show. CBN Cable Network presents another fine mess. A 60th anniversary film festival celebrating the teaming of Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. Featuring co-hosts Chuck McCann, and Jim McGeorge, with celebrity interviews from Hal Roach, Richard W. Bann, Rosina Lawrence, and John McCabe. And now, here's another fine mess with Stan and Dolly. And Chuck and Jim. Thank you. Thank Hi. You. Tonight there's going to be a party. Right, and you're invited. So just sit back and get ready to laugh like you've never laughed before. Their names mean laughter throughout the world. They're the funniest comedy team ever to grace the silver screen. And the only comedians actually to make successful the transition from silent films to sound. They've made us laugh now for 60 years. Right. 
And 60 years. Think about that. Mr. Stan Laurel and Mr. Oliver Hardy. And kind of still, their magic is as funny and as fresh today as it was when it was created. Maybe even more so with all the troubled times that we're having. Now, this party is to celebrate the anniversary of their 60 years together. Tonight, we're going to show you three of their best short subjects. Now, if you don't know, Laurel and Hardy made over 105 films in all, including 27 feature films. Also tonight, you'll meet their illustrious supporting cast. Jimmy Fenlayson, Billy Gilbert, Thelma Todd, Mae Bush, Charlie Hall, Anita Garvin, just to name a few. And you'll see their Academy Award-winning short, The Music Box, and our title film, Another Fine Mess. Our third and final film we'll show this evening will be uh, voted on by you, the viewers out there. That's right. The voters have, over the past few weeks gave, well, they uh, actually now have the choice down to two shorts, Them Thar Hills mm -hmm. and Hog Wild. Now, by calling the 900 number now appearing on your screen, you can vote for the third film to be shown tonight. Vote as often as you please, but remember, there is a 50-cent charge for each call. Two bits, that's not bad for Laurel and Hardy. Film. No, no, no. And no. what do you say we get on to our first film, Chuck? Okay. Now, I advise you to watch and listen real closely to this first segment, especially to Oliver Hardy, because he will give you the clue and will be asking our first trivia question when we come back. And right now, here's another fine mess from Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> Another Fine Mess. Photography by Jack Stevens. Recording by Elmer Vegas. Editing by Richard Courier. Dialogue by H.M. Walker. And direction by James Parrott. We thank you. I'm leaving everything in your care. Be sure that the person who rents my house is reliable. A person you can trust. Yes, yes sir. Very good. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye Colonel. Sir. And don't forget to tell me. Thank heaven he's gone. South Africa has my sympathy. You see, a couple of bozos run this way. Sure, a couple just went in there. What's wrong? Trying to make a hotel out of the city park. Why, they even put a couple of benches together so that they could have twin beds. Oh, yeah? Yes, and when I told him to move on, the little fella tips his hat and said, Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm sore about. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Well, here's another. 
another nice mess you've gotten me into. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Come on, let's reconnoiter. Are you sure you have everything? Oh, certainly I've got everything. Will you get a move on before we miss that boat? Oh, all right. Oh, come on, hurry up. Get a move oh, on. Get I'm a move coming. on. But listen, do you really think it's safe for us to go away like this and leave this place until Monday? Oh, sure. The Colonel won't be back for at least six months. And what's the difference if we rent the house today or next week? It's all the same. All right, go on, oh, go on. Oh, you're always ready to start an oh, argument. Oh, and you're Come on, always hurry blaming up. me. Reminds me of old Avon's now. It's just the thing. Oh, is it the cop? Who is this Colonel Buckshot? What's he like? I haven't the slightest idea. I never met the old dear. Oh, I do hope he rents us the place. Somebody to rent the place. Oh, what'll we do? Do? Just use your brains. You put on the butler's clothes and tell them the Colonel is not home. Simple. Yes, but if they don't argue about it. home of Colonel Wilberforce Buckshot. Yes, sir. Well, uh, I understand this place is for rent. Is it? I, I mean, it is, yes. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 of course it is. Oh, 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 oh. I am Lord Leopold Plantry. 
take my call. Hey, the Colonel isn't home. You'll have... You wish to see the Colonel? Oh, 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 oh. Why, I'd love to. Oh, oh, oh. Colonel Buckshot! Oh, Wally! Uh, Colonel Buckshot! Wait there. Colonel Buckshot! What is it, Hives? It's Lord Appletree. He wants to rent a room. No, no, my dear fellow, Plumtree, Plumtree. Lord Leopold Plumtree. And I want to rent the entire house. Show them to the solarium. I'll be right down. This way, sir. Good morning. Many, many, many good morning. Have I the pleasure of addressing Colonel Wilberforce Buckshot? None other. Colonel Buckshot at your service. I am Lord Leopold Plantry. Delighted. My wife. Charm. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I have just returned from our honeymoon. <laughs> the hotel being full, my dear little wife suggested that we rent a furnished home. <laughs> you understand? Yes, yes, yes. So we should like to take possession immediately. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Oh, besides the butler, you have maid service. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> I'd like to see the maid, please. Just a moment. Oh, Hives, will you call Agnes? Who? Call Agnes. Oh, Agnes! Pardon me, just a moment. What do you want to tell him the Colonel was home for? I couldn't help it. You've case. got me into this mess and you've got to get me out of it. What do you mean, I got Go you. put the maid's clothes on and we'll get rid of them. I'm not going to put the maid's clothes on. What a lovely piano. It is beautiful, isn't it? Do you play, Colonel? Well, uh, yes and uh, no. <laughs> oh, do render us a selection. Well, I'll try. Plum tree, Lord Leopold Plum tree, my car. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, a thousand pardons. My mistake. <laughs> Pardon me, it must be the postman. What do I do with these? Put them on. You wear them. Oh, uh, do you play anything else, Colonel? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm very efficient at croquet, pot cheesy, and uh, billiards. Oh! You have a billiard room. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> I should love to see it. Why, certainly. If you'll just follow me. Pardon me, my dear. All right, darling. Uh, Agnes will be right down. Thank you, Colonel. Come. Uh, the billiard room. <laughs> uh, uh, right upstairs. Now, right this way, it's, uh, there's a beautiful old masterpiece. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what is the title of that piece of art? Uh, Physic at the Well. Oh, I <laughs> see. The billiard room? Oh, yes, the <laughs> billiard room. Uh, that chair is an old heirloom. <laughs> uh, there's a picture I must show you. Uh, that's a gondola going through the Panama Canal oh. in Venice. Oh! <laughs> now to the billiard room. The billiard room. <laughs> yes, the billiard room, and we'll have that all. Uh, uh, Agnes, uh, meet your new master, Lord Flagpole Crabtree. Plantry, Plantry, Lord Leopold Plantry, my car. That's right. <laughs> Pardon me, are you any relation to the butler? Oh, yes, yes, sir. They are twins. You see, one was born in Detroit and the other in the army. <laughs> I don't quite understand. Oh, that's all right. Neither do they. <laughs> Great. Agnes, you may go. Yes, sir. Oh, Agnes, when you see my wife, uh, give her my regard. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Agnes! So, you're Agnes? Yes, ma'am. My, what a striking resemblance between you and the butler. Yes, ma'am. You see, uh, I'm twins. How remarkable. <laughs> I'd like to find out a few details regarding the house. Yes, ma'am. Tell me, Agnes, how long have you been here? About a half an hour. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> How silly of me. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> I mean, uh, a half a year. To be exact, three months. <laughs> <laughs> How many bedrooms are there? I haven't looked yet. You haven't you looked uh, yet? Oh, <laughs> I'm still nervous. <laughs> That's silly of me. <laughs> bedrooms. Now, let me see. Of course, there must be bedrooms. Uh, fancy a house without bedrooms. <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> now, let me see now. There's mine and the master's. And masters and mine, that's four. Uh, not forgetting the couch in the hall. <laughs> then there's uh, No, 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 no. There's the masters and yours. That's two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How silly. <laughs> uh, two. Oh, and then there's the nursery. The nursery? Yes, ma'am. Why? I didn't understand that the colonel was married. Oh, oh <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> he has that in case of accident. <laughs> accident? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, no. You misunderstood me, didn't you? <laughs> Isn't that silly? He has that in case of accident to any of the help around the house. A sort of a kind of a hospital. Oh, <laughs> how noble of him. Is it? <laughs> oh, my well. Tell oh. me, Agnes, uh, how many maids does the Colonel keep? Oh, he, he never tells me his private affairs. Private ever. affairs? Why, servants are private affairs. Oh, some of them are. 
You see, I'm the only one left at present. The others left last week. They had housemaid's knees. <laughs> <laughs> Agnes, wouldn't you like to stay on with us? Huh? Oh, now, don't disappoint me. Say that you will. You'll be such a comfort to me. My husband will be away most of the time. Oh, say that you will. Oh, go on. <laughs> ah, at last I've found it, Lord Appletree. Plum tree, my dear fellow. Plum tree, accent on the lamb, my car. Plum tree, plum tree, plum tree. <laughs> I am awfully sorry. Now, what did I do with that billiard room? Oh, 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 oh. That's quite all right, old fellow. I never play anyway. Leopold Ambrose! Leopold! Are you quite satisfied, darling? Oh, perfectly, my dear. And what good news I have for you. With the Colonel's permission, Agnes has consented to stay on with us. <laughs> Why, nothing would please me better. Uh, she's been in my service since boyhood. I, I mean, girlhood. <laughs> <laughs> now, dear, will you return to the depot and attend to our trunks while I go over final details with dear old Bucky? <laughs> Quite right, Plummy. <laughs> Come, Agnes, see me off. Yes, ma'am. You're such a dear. <laughs> Oh, Agnes, call me a cab. Huh? Call me a cab. You're a cab. Oh, on the telephone! <laughs> Are you quite sure we can take immediate possession? Oh, absolutely. I'm leaving in a few minutes. It won't be long now. Wonderful. Uh, what would the rental be? Uh, would twenty dollars a month be too much? Twenty dollars a month? Yes. Why, that's practically giving it away, Colonel. Well, I picked it up for practically nothing myself. What a beautiful car. Is it for sale? Uh, it could be purchased. Oh, by the way, Colonel, have you any horses? I'm sorry. I've just shipped all of my horses to my plantation in Kentucky. Kentucky? What part of Kentucky do you come from, Colonel? Omaha. Dear old Omaha. I thought Omaha was in Wisconsin. About Agnes's salary. Oh, uh, don't worry about that. That isn't due until next month. Uh, Agnes, call Hives. Huh? Call Hives. Oh, Hives! Pardon me just a moment. Ives will be right down. Correct, Colonel. Thank you. Uh, uh, won't you have one? <laughs> now, my dear plum tree, I think that covers everything. Yes, I think so, Colonel. I shall add it up and give you a check for same. Very good, very good. Three, four. Don't carry one, two, three. Ah, there you are, Hives. Uh, Hives, what is your salary? Oh, uh, pardon me just a moment. Uh, oh, by the way, Hives, what is your day off? Tuesday. Tuesday? Why, today is Tuesday. However, I shan't alter conditions. Uh, you may have your day off. Oh, and by the way, on your way out, tell Agnes I want to see her. Tell Agnes he wants to see her. <laughs> Colonel, you're a very easy man to do business with. <laughs> so the Morgans have told me. You see, the last deal that we had on... Oh. <laughs> Hello? 
just a minute. I forgot to pack my bow and arrow. Oh, Agnes! Uh, that's my cab. Get my hat and coat and go to the door. What do you think I am? <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, Plummy. Pleasant journey, Colonel. Thank you. Well, thank you. What's this? You wish to see Colonel Buckshop? I... Why, nothing would suit me better. Colonel Buckshot! Uh, uh, pardon me. Uh, just a moment, Colonel. Your check. Oh, that's all right. Just mail it to me to South Africa. <laughs> uh, did you wish to see me? So you're Colonel Buckshot. At your service. The last of the Kentucky Buckshots. Oh. Then, uh, who do you think I am? Don't tell me. Let me guess. Now, just a moment. I'll get it. Now, where have I seen that face before? Now, let's see. Let's see. Oh, you... No, no, no. That isn't it. Now, wait. It's, uh... No, it isn't either. Now, wait just a minute. I'll get it. Uh, that's all right. I'll get it. You just wait a second now. Uh, don't tell me, Agnes. I'll get it. <laughs> I'll get it right out of here. Just a moment. Now, let's... <laughs> I know who you are. Mm -hmm. You are Colonel Buckshot. <laughs> right you are. <laughs> Police! Help! Officers! Police! Burglars! Oh. <laughs> Pardon me. Come, Agnes. Yes. Why, who are you? Uh, do you wish to see Colonel Buckshaw? He's in there. And who do you think I am? I haven't the slightest idea. Get out of my house. Get... Oh, God, save the king! Help! 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 What's wrong, boys? In here. What's wrong? There's burglars in this house and they're in there. Burglars? Yes. Let's go, man. Hey, Jim, I want to I wanna ask you now, how closely did you watch and listen to the previous film? Why? What, what, what do I get if I answer the trivia question? What do you get? Yeah. Close your eyes. What do you see? Nothing. That's what you get. <laughs> okay. But our caller number four will get a beautiful hard co a copy here of 
Laurel and Hardy, The Magic Behind the Movies by Randy Scredbit. Laurel and Hardy, The Magic Behind the Movies from Moonstone Press of Beverly Hills. That goes to the winner. Right, and I've been reading and it is filled with pictures and stories that took place on camera and off camera while the films were actually being made. I know, it's, it's, it's a terrific, terrific book. book. Now along with the book, we're also going to send out a copy of the 60th anniversary commemorative mug. <laughs> and a poster from CBN. Now, Jim. Give the number for our folks to call. Right you are. And here's the number, 1-804-523-2808. But don't call until Chuck has asked a question. Remember, we'll start with caller number four. Okay. okay. Now, right. here it is. What is Ollie's exact comment to Stanley while they were on the steps leading out of the cellar after the door latch closed behind them? Uh, His exact words. Right. Now, start the calls now. Okay. Okay. Calls are coming in. This right. mug, even, you know, the, my coffee even tastes better in this uh, wonderful Laurel and Hardy mug. Why, of course. Call in. You should get one of these. Mm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Okay. Now, as the calls are coming in, you think about it. What were the exact words that Oliver Hardy actually said on the steps going up when the latch closed on the door above him? Okay. Now, I've seen the film. I've seen the film, and... Uh... It's a tough one. Now, when we come back, uh, are the phone's coming in. Have we got a caller? Okay. From Rochester, New York. Are you listening? Okay. Rochester, are you there? Yes, I am. Gee. Uh, okay, <laughs> now, do you know the exact words of Oliver Hardy when the door latched on the door as he was coming up the steps? What are they? This is another fine mess you've got me into. Oh, oh what do you say, audience? No! They were listening. Close. Okay, do we have another caller? Very close. We have another caller. I'm sorry, Rochester. She, Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I could have... I could have sworn that was it, but it isn't. The audience, was that it? Don't tell them now. We've got we to gotta have a winner. Do we have another caller we have coming more, in? More callers okay. coming in. One more caller coming in. All right. Uh, you on the line, Mr. Caller? Huh? I'm, I'm going to ask the audience to give them a shake-up mug. I'll tell you That's that. <laughs> okay, do we have another caller? Okay, here it is. Caller, are you there? Do you have... All right, audience, what did Laurel and Hardy... What did Oliver Hardy say as he went up the stairs? Hey, Wait, I have a young man right here. Right okay, here. come on. You stand up, okay? <laughs> what did Oliver Hardy say as, he, as the door latched over? Well, this is another fine mess you got me into. Oh, no, fine. <laughs> Who else wants to try? Who thinks they know? Down here. Well, th this. This fine mess you've got me into. Not fine. Go to what? Another mess you got me into. No. Another nice mess you got me into. Hey! Hey! You'll have to wash that one out. <laughs> okay, one more. Oh, well, oh, he's an employee? Oh, no fair. All right. Well, well, uh, we'll ask more questions later. We're going to give a shake up mugs to all of those people anyway. Oh, by the way, when we come back, we're going to visit with the president and the boss of the Laugh Factory, home of Laurel and Hardy, Mr. Hal Roach. Mr. Roach not only owned the studio, but Team Stan and Babe together, and he was their mentor. All right, Mr. Roach is now 96 years young and still going strong. I know, because I was at his last birthday party. <laughs> we also want to hear from our friend Dick Band, don't we, with some insights into the direction of the boys' careers before their teaming. A Laurel and Hardy's 60th Anniversary Film Festival. You know, some of Hollywood's biggest laughs came out of the Hal Roach studio, just like the that one there. Is, uh... The studios also housed Harold Lloyd, Charlie Chase, Patsy Kelly, our gang, and Harry Langdon. And the man who ran it was affectionately known to all of them as the boss. My pal, Mr. Hal Roach. Harold and Hardy uh, were uh, working at the Hal Roach Studios. Uh, uh, Hardy, as a heavy comedian, had been uh, under contract to the Hal Roach Studios for some time. Uh, Laurel was uh, in Vaudeville in Los Angeles. Somebody told me that a very funny English comedian was there to see him. I did see him. Uh, he was, uh, I thought he was very funny. I made, gave him a seven-year contract. 
Neil McCary was my assistant at that time, <clears throat> and he was very much sold on uh, Laurel and also on Hardy. And uh, finally, he worked out a story called uh, Putting Pants on Philip, and why they did not play it as a team, they played it so close together. And after we previewed the picture, which was very funny, we realized that we had a team and that one would be both of these men complimented each other. And uh, therefore, that it was, as far as we were concerned, it was a comedy team. Dick Ban has been a Laurel and Hardy bluff for well over 25 years, and his authoritative filmography and research provide, provided the following insights. Stan Laurel, of course, came here with Chaplin as Chaplin's understudy. When Chaplin went to work for Senate, Stan then continued in, in vaudeville for many years and went back and forth between motion picture contracts, which really didn't advance him anywhere, and going back and forth to, to vaudeville. Uh, at one point, he just got tired of vaudeville and had reconciled himself to a career behind the scenes as a writer, as a gag man at Hal Roach Studios. It took Stan Laurel a long time to find his comic persona, and it really wasn't. There's really no hint of, of what kind of a comedian he was going to be uh, until he became, in 1926, the Stan Laurel that we know and love uh, of the Laurel and Hardy pictures. Oliver Hardy joined the motion picture business in 1913. It appeared he had a very lucrative niche for himself, appearing in excess of 200 films before he was teen with Stan Laurel. You know, so many things happened to Laurel and Hardy while they were making their movies. For instance, in a movie that they made called Big Business, where they sold Christmas trees on the 4th of July in Los Angeles, Jimmy Van Lason wrecks their truck while they wreck his house. Well, there was something that happened while they were shooting that film. Hal Roach tells the story. Listen, it's Hal Roach telling the story of Big Business and that fateful day. We needed a bungalow in which they were going to wreck the bungalow. And uh, at the studio, the uh, location director will go out with a camera, photograph so many bungalows, and show them to the director and say, which one do you want? Which they did, and it turned out the one he liked owned, was owned by a man working at the studio. So we made a contract with him, said, we're going to tell your house apart, but we guaranteed to put it back the way it was. Our deal is all made. Now the director, who has the picture of the house, he's in the first car, about 10 cars going there. And as he comes, he sees the house, looks like the picture. He says, this is it, stop there. And uh, he gets the, uh, 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 they all get out and all. And finally, the assistant director says, the key does not open the door. He said, don't worry, you're going to break the door down anyway. Break the door down. Now they go in, they break down the door, now they break every window, they cut down every tree, they cut down every shrub there is in the place, they completely wreck this guy's house. And one day before they're finished, a car pulls up in front of this house, the man, his wife, and two children. The woman almost faints, and the man packed the same. And they're doing this all at the wrong house. And the house that they should be was another block farther up the street. So Roach had to pay for two houses instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, Mr. Roach. Thank you for that story. Okay, the tally. Hog Wild has 272 votes. Right, and them thar hills, 264. Okay, okay. It's a nip and tuck now. A Laurel and Hardy's 60th anniversary film festival. We would like to thank R.C. Cola for, for providing these uh, ter terrific refreshments. Mm, 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 okay. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Let's have a toast oh, to Stan and to Babe. Mm, thank you, R.C., you too. You know, uh, actually, back in, I think it was 1959, when Stan first introduced me to you, Jim. Right. And we've been partners ever since. And often we think, if Stan and Babe were around today, how much fun they'd have with modern technology. You know, like new things, like a 707 or just a common uh, microwave, for instance. 
We have an audience full of hungry guests. I'll have a dot in a jiffy. Would you like something while you're waiting? I wouldn't mind an apple. Right. What's that? Well, it's an apple. Not that kind of apple. Here. Now what? We didn't want that kind of apple. I got your Macintosh. Never you mind. What were you working on? Well, you see, wait a minute. I'll show you. It's a micro stand. Micro stand? I can cook a dinner for 12 in just seconds. Watch. <laughs> this is terrific. There, it's ready. Dinner for 12. That looks more like an hors d'oeuvre. Well, it works good if you have enough turkeys. Put it over there, will you, Alan? Take the cake. Oh, one more egg. <laughs> Just pour it in the pan and let's go. That's enough. I know what I'm doing. No, you don't know what you're doing. We haven't got time. They're hungry. Oh! There. Blow those candles out before you melt the cake. Happy anniversary, Ollie. Do you want to make a wish? Yeah, that I don't burn up. Are you? Whenever we attempt to emulate Stan and Babe, we only do it with great reverence and humility. For there was only one Laurel and Hardy. And so, just purely as humble imitators, we only hope to stir your memories a little. Right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you've ever tried to lift anything up just a few steps, think what the problems they have with the 132 steps they encounter in the music box. <laughs> See, it's the latest model. Can you deliver it right away? Right away, madam. You see, it's my husband's birthday, and I want to surprise him. Oh, I understand. And the address, please? 1127 Walnut Avenue. 1127 Walnut Avenue. Could you tell me where 1127 Walnut Avenue is? 1127 Walnut Avenue? Yes, sir. That's the house up there, right on top of the stoop. That's the house up there, right on top of the stoop. Steady, Susie. Just a moment. This requires a little thought. Now ease it down on my back. Why don't you be careful? 
He kicked you? Yes, officer. Right in the middle of my daily duties. <clears throat> oh, he kicked you, did he? See what he wants. You go down and see what he wants. Don't argue with me. Go see what the man wants. I'm not arguing. Go ahead.
you mean by molesting that girl? Who, me? Yes, you. Why, well, I was just getting... Now let that be a lesson to you. Are you going to stand for that? Say, listen, if he'd have said one more word to me, I would have... <laughs> oh. Now let that be another lesson to you. It's... Say, listen. Don't you think you're bounding over your steps? What do you mean, bounding over my steps? <laughs> Why, he means uh, overstepping your bounds. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now let that be a lesson to you. Oh! Skull's going to take this thing out of the way? What's it to you? Well, I should like to pass. Why don't you walk around? What, walk around? Me, Professor Theodore von Schwarzenhofer, M.D., A.D., D.D.S., F.L.D., F.F.F.N.F., should walk around? Get that thing out of my way! Get out of my way! Come on, get out of the way! Out of the way!
you fellas carry that piano all the way up these stairs? You didn't have to do that. You see that road down there? All you had to do... All you had to do was to drive around that road to the top here. Now, why didn't we think of that before? a moment. Well, I guess we'll have to take it back. Why? There's nobody home. Where there's a will, there's a way. We'll take the piano through the window, carry it down the stairs, and place it in the living room. You find a ladder, and I'll get the block and tackle.
Ollie! What? There's somebody home. Are they up there? No, I heard them coming up the stairs. You heard them coming up. Well, stupid, that was me! That was you? Why, certainly. Well, how'd you get in the house? Well, I was standing on the ladder while you were pulling the piano up and the block intact. Get back in there! Throw me my hat! Heard them coming up the stairs. Is it now? You got my hat. Here. Now throw me mine. Now get back in that house and I don't want to hear any more out of you. Where'd you get the hat? Now let's get this piano downstairs. Get it out.
doing up there? I was trying to plug it in. That's not the place to plug it in. Give it to me. If I see him, I'll run him in. Thank you, officer. You know, there are actually 132 steps on that uh, music box set, and it's actually a place, and it's on Vendome Street. You know, a lot of people, were, we were playing on those steps just the other day, and people said, how do, how do I join the Laurel and Hardy Club? Well, it isn't the Laurel and Hardy Club. It's uh, the Laurel and Hardy Appreciation Society, and it was founded as the Sons of the Desert by John McCabe. Now, here's Jack to tell you how he found, how he came up with the idea of this 
Wonderful Appreciation Society. Jack? I founded the Sons of the Desert because it answered a need. In the, uh, uh, in the months just before I wrote my book, Mr. Laurel and Mr. Hardy, I wanted to get some idea of the kind of people who loved Laurel and Hardy. So I asked Dan if he would save some of his fan mail for me. And he said, I'll not only save it for you, I'll give it to you, and I'll give you about three months' worth, which he did, hundreds of letters. I went through them all, and I was astonished at the variety of people who loved Laurel and Hardy. You had college professors and street cleaners and 11-year-old girls and the entire gamut of, and, and all of them seemed to be saying in their letters, we would like to have some kind of focus on our love for you two wonderful men. So I founded this group uh, deliberately uh, as a joke, a, as an act of satire. In other words, it's a, a social organization that kids social organizations. The serious side, basically, of The Sons is that we encourage everywhere the showing of the films of Laurel and Hardy, uncut or tastefully and meaningfully edited. The Sons are very active. We're all over this country, of course, in the large cities and smaller cities. We have uh, we have tents, as we call them, chapters in, in Canada, and of course all over Great Britain. We have them in Germany and France and Sweden, Australia, and, and various other places. Well, fellas, uh, you see, you were great, and they are. Why don't I introduce uh, the New York chapter head, Dwayne Smith. Dwayne and I were one of the founding members. Uh, why don't you introduce the guys as we go down, okay, Certainly. Dwayne? This is Kevin Mulligan and uh, Mr. Alan Hembro from Flying Deuces, Marty Kondak from New York, Jim Long from uh, the, their first mistake tent. And Jim McGeorge. And Jim McGeorge. <laughs> Would you get out of there and come up here? Mm -mm -mm. Why don't we all sing the Sons of the Desert song, Very okay? Strange. All right, here we go. Follow along. <laughs> The moment has come, all right? A little timpani maestro, please. There it is. All right. The third film this afternoon will be Hog Wild. Hog Wild. Stuttering? <laughs> <laughs> 
Have you seen my hat? Of course she's seen your hat. You may leave. <laughs> There you are. How do you expect me to uphold the dignity of my home when you belittle me in front of the servants? This has gone far enough. If I don't find that hat, I'm leaving this house never to darken its doors again. I don't find it. Have a care. Oh, you found it. Yes. What was it doing under the bed? An appointment with Stanley. What about our radio? Well, what about it? It hasn't worked in three months. Just because you've been too, too indisposed to put up an aerial. I'll put it up tomorrow. You'll put it up today, right now. to hear Japan, too. Do you mind if I help you? I don't mind. That is, if you'll help me. Back your car in. Thank <laughs> you. 
pick that ladder up. to go down for a thing. Put one of those poles on that end. on that pole. Thank you. 
You'd better go in the house and I'll pass the wire down to you. Oh, go ahead!
Uh, the musical and the Western have always been good box office, especially in the 1930s. Right. Singing cowboys were all over the place, and the boys were not about to be outdone. Were That's they? right. Oh, Chuck, how about Paper Chase now? Why oh, don't you go... a Paper Chase, by the way, we're not going to interrupt Paper Chase at all by the way so yep. so it'll no. be on and it is its entirety in, in its entirety oh that's so great we'll so, that. uh, i want to take you back to april 16th 1937 it was the release date for way out west stan and babe's answer to the way a western musical should be done now the female lead mary roberts was played by miss rosina lawrence who you might recognize from her earlier roach studio days when she was miss lawrence teacher of the our gang kids here she is I worked on the Roach lot about three and a half to four years. I was next in line from the Our Gang. I was the next age group, you know, and I always received the uh, ingenue roles. Uh, oh, I had a black wig on. They put it on for that particular role. There were times when, in between scenes, they would go on the, the side of the sound stage, and they'd be working on the next scene, and uh, they'd figure out the different gags they had that they were going to use whatever they were, had to be done and uh, they uh, you'd hear them laughing oh my goodness would they laugh but then they would come on and do the next scene stan uh, when they hit him over the head and it becomes a soprano voice and that was my voice in the blue ridge mountains of virginia <laughs> they were dear they were really very dear men. Uh, you know, Chuck, I hate to say it, but, well, the party's almost over. Oh, no, no. Not as long as we have a projector to run the Laurel and Hardy film. The party will always go on. That's true. These two comedians, these two gentlemen who have opened their doors of our hearts with a key of laughter and made themselves right at home. Their ability to bounce back from life's daily blows, but not just a smile, but with a twiddle of the tie or a fluff of the hair, in innocent defiance, and makes us, endears us more to them all the time. You know, they do what we wish we could do when we're confronted with our overwhelming problems. In a way, they are adult children that live in a world of fantasy bordered all about by harsh reality. With Stan's film magic, a thumb can become a pipe lighter. A fall while putting up an antenna results in nothing more than just riotous laughter rather than broken bones or bruises. Yes, we envy them because of their unending and unlimited friendship, which they enjoy. Yeah. And they are utterly devoted to each other and their own common good. They were born Arthur Stanley Jefferson and Oliver Norville Hardy. But around the world, they are known as... Stanley O. E. Olio in Italy. In Germany, audiences laugh with Dick und Duf. And the Swedes watch Herlin Ach Herven. And Polish moviegoers enjoy them as Fleep E. Fleep. Uh, whether they are Gogo -go is in Norway, Stan Aspen in Hungary, or even Hashmen Ve Harze in Israel, their names mean laughter. A mirthful moment of escape from the daily grind and lasting memory of the two men who made life more enjoyable for us by either taking our minds off our troubles or letting us just see how fleetingly ridiculous life can be at times. Well, Ollie passed away on August 7th, 1957, and Stanley followed his good friend on February 23rd of 1965. But are they really gone? Not really. You see, now they live up there on the big movie screen because they left their shadows behind. It was Dick Van Dyke who eulogized Stan Laurel the day of his funeral. I, along with a chapel full to capacity with all the clowns of Feldom, we had come to pay our last respects to one of, one of our own. Dick's final tribute was a poem which I'd like to share with you now. He said, God bless all clowns who star the world with laughter, who ring the rafters with a flying jest, who would make the world spin merry on its way and somehow add more beauty to each day. 
God bless all clowns. So poor the world would be lacking with their piquant touch, hilarity, the belly laughs, the ringing, lovely mirth that makes a friendly place of this earth. God bless all clowns. Give them a long, good life and make bright their way. They're a race apart. All comes most who turn their heart's pain into a dazzling jest just to lift the heart. Oh, God bless all clouds. Thank you very much. Promotional considerations have been provided by the following companies. R.C. Cola. There's more to your world than Coke or Pepsi. Decide for yourself. R.C. Cola. Moonstone Press of Beverly Hills. For Laurel and Hardy, the magic behind the movies. And Ramblin' Conrad's Guitar Shop.